So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, and this is another episode of Backroads Arizona. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I installed the seat inserts to run the factory four-point harnesses through the seat instead of around the side. When my daughter sit in the back seat and the harnesses were coming around the outside of the seat, uh, they almost slid off a couple times, just didn't feel uh, very good about it. So we put the inserts in, and then I also added these pads uh, just to make it a little bit more comfortable for them. We're gonna go over the install and how I did it, some helpful tips, what I did wrong. So let's get to it. So the kit will come with a paper template. You have to cut out a couple spots before taping it to the back of the seat, but the template was very easy to follow as far as lining it up to make the cut. So after cutting all the necessary spots out on the template, I placed it on the seat. There is good lines to follow as far as the back of the seat to the template to make sure that you line it up correctly. So I actually videoed me doing the second seat. I had already done one just so I didn't waste your guys' time and making sure I knew what I was talking about being as though this is the first time that I've done this. So on the first seat, I did use the template and mark it out with a marker. Being as though this is the second seat and I'm not doing anymore, I'm just leaving the template on there and using it as my guide. Now I'm taking a drill and just drilling around all the hard corners. If it was a straight shot, I did not drill as many holes. Now I put a piece of hose on my drill so I did not penetrate too deeply into the seat once it went through the plastic. Now in the instructions, I believe it says to use a box cutter. However, I ended up using my Dremel tool with a basic die grinding bit. Honestly, I think it melted more than it cut but I still feel I had a lot better control and was more accurate using it than trying to use the box cutter that I used on the first seat. If a razor is all you have, then I would recommend heating it up with a lighter for the sharp corners, and that might melt through the plastic a little easier. I did do that as well. Also, be prepared to be changing blades quite often to keep that blade nice and sharp, so it does make it easier. So after doing all the cutting with the Dremel tool, I did end up using my box knife to help break up because what would happen is the Dremel would melt the plastic back together just a little bit, but it would easily cut with the box cutter. So I'm sure the template was accurate, however I did go a little small with the cut to be on the safe side. So then I took the pass through harness and put it up in place visualized where it needed to be cut more and then just took the box knife or the Dremel tool and widened it out in those areas until I had a nice snug fit. This did take a little extra time because I did have to cut a little bit, check it, cut a little bit. However, the end result ended up coming out very clean. So now that I've got that so it pushes in and it's a nice tight fit, we're gonna flip it over and do the front side. So this is where it got a little confusing as far as the instructions go, because I figured we were gonna cut out a pattern as well on the front. However, you only make a single cut on the front, one inch down from the seam between the black part of the upholstery, and in my case, the blue. So you follow that seam measuring one inch down all the way across, and a diagonal down on each side. Then there is another seam in the black part of the upholstery that you will need to pass about a quarter of an inch past the seam on both sides following the same diagonal cut. Now I'm just using a straight edge to mark my line all the way across and on the diagonals to make sure I have a clean line to follow. After drawing my lines with the marker I decided to double check my measurement all the way across. I highly recommend starting out with a brand new razor to do this cut to make sure it is nice and clean and you don't rip the upholstery. So once replacing the blade I started my cut and using a slight sawing action, the upholstery cut very clean. Now when you get to the seams, it did take a little bit more effort to make the cut, but I had no issues whatsoever. So I didn't want to edit any of this cut out, just so you can see that the upholstery did cut pretty nicely. Right here I'm actually into that other seam, and it did take a little bit more effort right there to pop through that seam. Each one of these seats probably took us about an hour on average to do, the first one took me a little longer because of the uh, learning curve since I had not done it before. Right here I'm just peeling back the cut. Now you will need to cut the foam in the seat. So the instructions recommended using one of these extendable razor knives to do this cut. 
However, I did not have a new blade for mine, so I ended up using this saw. The cool thing about this saw is it actually takes sawzall blades. So you always have a blade for it. It retracts fully to, for safety reasons, and it also can adjust to any angle. I did go ahead and start the cut with a regular utility knife to get it down as deep as I could. Then using that saw, I went ahead and punctured all the way through the foam and began the sawing action to cut the rest of the way through the foam. Once again, you are only doing a single cut. You will not be removing any of this foam. A razor knife would have been a little bit cleaner, but I did not have an issue using this saw to do this cut. Once completing this cut, it is time to put the inserts in. So unfortunately, I thought the camera was running and it did not. So I'm going to just explain how we got the inserts to snap together. Now I'm not gonna lie, we fought this process for quite some time before figuring out a good way to do it. So what you're gonna wanna do is get a block of wood or something to prop up the base of the seat so it is higher than the top of the seat. Then I went ahead and put the back part of the insert in the seat, put the base of the seat up on that block of wood so that the top of the seat where the insert is, is sitting nice and flat on the ground. Then I took the front insert, put it in the seat and pushed hard down to snap the two inserts together. This is the best method I found to do this and it did take us a while to figure it out. So our razor came with factory four point harnesses. So right now we're just unbolting them, running them through the seats and bolting them back up. One thing to keep in mind, it is more of a pain to remove your seats to get to the battery to do this. Uh, but you can still get the battery out and just lift the seat up a little bit on the driver's side and kind of tilt it and I was able to get to the battery without having to remove the harnesses. One other thing we did end up doing uh, because the factory harnesses can be uncomfortable on the shoulders is we added a body glove shoulder strap. We went and got these at AutoZone and uh, they are a lot more comfortable riding on your shoulders than just the the factory harness. I think they were like 20 bucks for a set and we ended up getting two sets. We tried another one that was only 10 bucks a set and those ones did not reach around the harness to Velcro back up. One other thing to keep in mind when you're putting the harnesses back through is make sure they don't twist on you while you're doing this. Then you gotta redo it. So we have been on a couple trips since we put these inserts into the seats and the body glove shoulder pads and both of my daughters used to get red shoulders and get kind of sore and it hasn't been nearly as bad the last couple trips we've taken since we've done this. So hope you guys enjoy this video and it gave you some good information and hope to see you next time. If you haven't subscribed, please do and hit like. Have a good one. Later.